How's it going, guys? Reese here, back with another video for you. I'm gonna make this one quick um, because I've just I've just recorded all this and then I ran out of space on my drive. So, <laughs> PS, I was nearly finished as well. PSAC, um, Property Solutions Acquisition, uh, has announced a merger with uh, Faraday Futures, the EV company, which is obviously in a trend, which is something we're interested in. Uh, it's not having the greatest day since uh, the announcement because of obviously the ongoing concerns with the stock market. Everything's going a bit upside down with uh, GME and all that sort of stuff, AMC. So we won't get into that. But so basically, this is an EV company. Um, price is still pretty low. Um, <clears throat> it might require a bit of patience. Uh, there's, a, there's an article here um, from Yahoo Finance. I'll stick in the uh, link in the description for you. Um, now let's have a look at the investor presentation. So it's an EV company. Basically, they've. Uh, I'll get into the CEO as well. Sorry, the founder. Um, he was in a bit of bit of bother in uh, China. Uh, some financial problems. He ended up getting banished or running away or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit dodgy. So he's resigned as the CEO. Somebody else is CEO now, and he's now put himself as a director of a design or something like that. Uh, but we'll, we'll get more into that in a minute. So this is the car, as you can see. Absolutely stunning. Some people don't like the the exterior. I love it. Um, I love the little logo and stuff. It looks really cool to me. Um, so this is the investor presentation. If I've not already said that, legal blah 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 uh, blah 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 blah. Let's have a look. So it does. Uh, it's got ten one thousand and fifty brake horsepower. Faraday Future FF ninety one is a rocket ship like vehicle, unlike anything we've ever driven. That's from Digital Trends. Um, bit about the team here I won't go too much into it but um, yeah so you've got your, your team there and some general information um, Faraday Future a, different, a, a differentiated and compelling investment opportunity more than 2 billion invested to date expected launch in 12 months of the merger um, supported by 40 plus, plus prototypes and pre-production uh, pre assets and robust hybrid manufacturing strategy um, 300 plus employees led by CEO Dr. Carsten Brightfield uh, a highly experienced, and a highly experienced management team, battery drivetrain and related technology. Basically they've got 880 patents or so um, with regards to um, EVs. So that's pretty good. Industry divine, defining uh, 1050 brake horsepower, less than 2.4 seconds, zero to 60, second only to Tesla in the EV range. Uh, luxury EV, only by 0 0.1 of a second by the way. Um, Unique, truly harmonized, internet autonomous driving, Reddit and intelligence third living space and outperforms Tesla. They had to get that in there, didn't they? Um, yeah, with uh, big revenue predictions. So, yeah, uh, the uh, the battery. Uh, I think oh, we'll get into that in a minute. Actually, um, Faraday future opportunity. FF ninety one is an electric car with Bugatti Veyron rivaling power. Says our blog. Um, as you can see, uh, you've got this is this is from a rear point perspective. So this screen is in the back, basically. So you've got like a big TV that you can watch films and stuff like that. Setting new standards for the luxury and performance that will enhance quality of life and redefine future intelligent mobile ecosystems. Um, the auto industry is expecting disruption across the value chain from product technology, uh, product and technology to manufacturing, sales and entire business model. The future of the industry will be driven by electrification and automation, which is uh, something I keep saying, it's a future trend automation. You need to uh, start looking at getting in some investments. I'm in VLDR, Navia and uh, LAZR, personally. But go and do your own research. Sharing and personalized user experience. FF software internet intelligence DNA is uniquely capable of building the next generation of highly personalized experiences on a cutting edge vehicle platform by creating new technologies and integrating clean mobility and connected digital ecosystems. FF is redefining the future of the automo automotive industry and moving humanity forward. But yeah, that's, that's some screen you've got there in the back for the kids. Uh, I'd be asking if someone else can drive so I can watch telly in the back and you'll see why in a minute. There's another reason why you want to be in the back. So they've got this model coming out first, 370 mile range, uh, not to 60, 2.4 seconds, and they've got the F81, so instead of going up, they're going down with the numbers, the 81 and the Futurist 81, which is, your Futurist is, is your premium model, your FF81 will be your standard model, um, still pretty expensive, uh, but it's going to go down to the mass market vehicle, the FF71, uh, and the Futurist version of that, so it's like, uh, you know, your M3 and your 3 series sort of thing. 
then you've got your smart last mail, mail delivery so you're going to get your parcels and stuff delivered with your your uh, Faraday Futures little vehicle here uh, well big vehicle um, but yeah it's, uh, it's it's looking good with regards to what we've seen so far founded in May 2014 by visionary YT Gia Year, however you want to pronounce that. FF had a fully developed electric vehicle beta prototype by August 2016. So they've got the prototypes. Um, you know, the working prototypes are brilliant. They do look really cool. They're really fast. Uh, and they're actually faster than Tesla. I'm, I'm not going to read this part out on here because I'm going to tell you now. They're faster than Tesla um, around the track, which is good. They're slightly, very slightly slower, not to 60, but um, around the track, they're faster by, I think it was 26 seconds or something like that. Uh, more about the leadership. I'll post a link to. Uh, I'll post a link in the description for this uh, investor presentation. Go and check it out fully if you want. More about the uh, people involved. Uh, built with innovative class redefining features. Um, Three hundred seventy miles, uh, one hundred thirty kilowatt battery, DC fast charging, not sixty two point four, one thousand fifty horsepower, three electric motors, all wheel drive, all wheel steer, as well, uh, which is cool, and rear wheel torque vectoring truly mobile connected I don't know if you never drove an EV I've never but they say that as soon as you put your foot down the torque it's just instant it's just straight off um, over 100 inches of high high resolution viewing across 11 displays so there's 11 displays in this vehicle um, fully certified in the US and China uh, regulations named one of the best cars of CES 2020 even though it's in production overwhelming user interest <clears throat> as, a, as you can imagine uh, they've got 14,000 reservations so far. With this transaction, the FF91 is expected to launch inside of 12 months of equity funding. So the closing of this SPAC uh, merger, which will be around end of April, early May, in my estimation, three, four months, you're going to get um, you're going to get the uh, the launch of the product 12 months later. So we're talking um, sort of like May next year, 2022, for the first one to come out. So it's a bit faster than Fisker, which is a, a positive, and we've obviously moved on quite a lot since Fisker's merger and, and announcement and stuff and we've still got quite a lot of time to wait on that one so this one might not have a, as much as a you know a flat a flat lined stock price for so long this one might actually really move a bit quicker um, like I say though I'm not happy with the uh, the the previous CEO still being involved he's a bit dodgy um, but yeah Faraday future CEO Dr. Carsten Brightfield and uh, somebody else from the company drove 270 miles from LA to Las Vegas with 110 miles still remaining from the original charge and a lot of this was uphill as you can see there 270 miles covered most of which was uphill um, but yeah I really like the look of it personally um, yeah it was around the track tw um, fast 23 seconds faster than the Model S um, Traditional automakers would kill to have an EV program with the level of development and interior technology that Faraday is offering. But if you look at this, just look at it, even the steering wheel just looks incredible. Look at all this. Nice upright infotainment system. Um, it just does look top quality. Look at the back. Now these seats, th this interior just looks extremely well made. Um, as you can see, FF91 is more like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce with a long, lean, spacious cabin, complete with a zero gravity reclining seat. So you'll see why I really want to be in the back of one of these and not in the front now. Boom. The passenger, look at that as well. You've got your uh, panoramic roof. Um, the passenger experience is heaven. The back seat is a dream. I don't need my hotel room. I thought I can sleep here. And I would too. Look at that. Um, amazing looks super comfortable uh, you're not going to get leg room like that in your average car uh, a revolutionary all new immersive intelligent and connected driving experience um, redefining the engagement seamless entry technology identifies user upon approach reconfigures vehicle press preferences and settings so it realizes who you are makes everything for you uh, I'm guessing that means the seating the, uh, the volume of things that connected your phone or, or whatever Six driver specific screens, including an ultra large heads up display, slim instrument cluster, reconfigurable 3D touch steering wheel, allowing further use, user, sorry, configurability. On screen gesturing and swipe fingers across center information display for distraction free driving. Voice first, foundation enabling multi natural commands at once. 
multiple natural commands at once. Comfort AC, seat position and doors. Uh, this thing also has a massage seats. That's a big a big one for me. Um, yeah, there you go. Innovative spa mode with ventilated seats, seat massage and control over ambient environment. You can watch the football. You can watch the the you know baseball, whatever you want in there. You can watch movies. Massive screen, amazing. Look at this. Just look at them seats. Just it looks like a first class um, airline seat sort of thing, but better. Not that I've sat in one personally. Um, so yeah, it's got broad, broadband connectivity, so you'll be able to connect your your, your Netflix and all that sort of thing, your, your TV. Um, continuous broadband connectivity and high speed powered super mobile AP there's three modems enhanced user experience platform powered by Android um, complex demand so you can ask for a restaurant with 5 star ratings with outside seating area book me a trip to Viji with an, open, open, an ocean view all that sort of stuff I wouldn't trust my car to book me that though without me checking it over now look at the uh, the horsepower in comparison so it's, it's it's obviously a lot more than the Model S, but the Model S is, is lighter, so that's why you get the speed still. Um, but yeah, it's just other than the uh, lucid air that's coming, which is conveniently left out of this. I don't see uh, any anyone with uh, much of a better comparison. Then you've got the Tesla is 0.1 seconds slower, uh, not to 60, but everything else it's just it's just beats. Um, I'm surprised how Porsche is uh, only 201 miles range. Um, but yeah, not far behind Tesla with a 24 uh, mile deficit on the range. Uh, charge time, 25 minutes, 20 to 80%. Um, second only to Porsche, you've got a tiny battery, obviously. And then Tesla, um, it takes an extra minute. So there's not much difference there. Uh, rear leg room, it doesn't look like much going up on the scale of the graph. But I mean, 35.4 inches, I'd struggle to sit in a Tesla in the, in the back. In that, you've got 14 inches on top of it. 14 inches is like, you know, it's quite a bit. So, 14 inches uh, is literally space that you can stretch your legs. Um, wheelbase, blah, blah, blah. Rear wheel, uh, sorry, rear seat recline angle, 60 degrees, which just absolutely laughs at everything else. Uh, that extra, again, that extra 16 degrees on the Mercedes is a, a big deal. Um, they can use this platform for a, a multiple uh, for all the all the vehicles basically. I think uh, I'm not sure about the truck, but I know the FF ninety one, eighty one, and seventy one, and obviously the future versions, which are the more higher end. So we know all about the battery and stuff like that. Uh, more stuff on that here. Won't go over it too much. Next generation passenger vehicle offerings leverage VPA. So then you've got your price points. So you've got from the the futurist F ninety one. FF91, sorry, it's from 180,000 with the the lesser model launching end of the year um, with an 80 grand discount on that, so you get that for 100 grand. And the next one, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So it starts getting quite affordable in uh, Q3 of 2023 at 59,000. Obviously, you can put the uh, the government incentive onto that as well, which is 7,500 discount. Uh, to Q2 of 2025, they're expecting to uh, have the, the mass produced, the another mass produced uh, car. Um, which is quite a while less than still just over four years away but that'll be from 45,000 with your government incentive taken off uh, another seven and a half as well so it's 38, 37 and a half thousand um, so yeah building the FF brand stand up versus competitors um, just talking about brand and stuff there nothing overly really important purpose built smart last mile delivery uh, vehicle as well so you've got six point uh, six foot five um, height in there, um, capacity of uh, 500 square feet, uh, or whatever the free means, quite a bit, I don't know much about that. Um, free size configurations, all built one VPA platform enabling fast launch. Uh, estimated charging, same as the car, 25 minutes for 20 to 80%. Uh, advanced connectivity and user experience, blah, 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 blah. Surround view cameras and improved visibility, future proof. So yeah, that's uh, a bit about that. I'm going to look into that a bit more. There's a bit more about the battery and stuff. We already know about that. Um, power to weight ratio is, is just dwarfs everyone else. Uh, battery pack level energy density dwarfs everyone else. Uh, I'd like to see how it stacks up against a Lucid, to be fair. This might be the main competitor for Lucid. Um, advanced internet autonomous driving intelligence. So it's got, it comes with the autonomy. Um, 
we'll just read a bit about that. High performance computer system. Look, they've, they've missed off the other compute system. Maybe they've not, or maybe I'm just being dumb. Level three capable system with redundant safety architecture based on NVIDIA, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it's a LIDAR based autonomy, uh, which is comes as, with the car. Um, so there'll be future autonomy with that as well. In the not too distant future, probably by the time they get this thing going, um, there'll be, auto you know, the autonomy will be ready to go street uh, legally. Uh, so they've got all the patents, they've got 880 patents, which is always good. It's nice to have patents because they're valuable too. You can, you can, you know, let other companies use them at a, a price. Um, you can make new products and sell them using those patents to other companies. Um, so they've got the they've got the facility in the US in Hanford, California, which is going to basically produce 10,000 um, or around 10,000 vehicles a year, which is not a lot at all. It's just next to nothing. But then they've got um, the South Korean uh, deal where they they can they can produce up to two hundred seventy thousand vehicles a year, so that's you know around two hundred eighty thousand a year. They're also trying to get a deal in China, which is what this next bit's about. Trying to get a deal going in China, um, which would be a total total annual expected production capacity of one hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand units estimated starting to twenty twenty five. So in twenty twenty five, you, you're talking you know over half a million units potentially uh, prov uh, produced a year, which is big. Um, so yeah uh, they've, they've got most of the key components already sourced they've already got the deals in place for all that as you can see um, already completed the vehicle development hurdles blah 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 blah. Um, comprehensive online and offline sales ecosystem so this is the sort of countries they're sort of targeting uh, with their stores so they're, they're going to be wanting to open, open all these stores uh, top 20 cities across three major markets by 2025 um, then you got your after sales stuff it's supposed to be premium I don't really see what's premium about it to be honest but you know it is what it is uh, but the car as you can see just does look uh, stunning with consumer consciousness consciousness on the rise and the market forces gaining momentum EVs are quickly becoming the future of auto, auto automotive automotive industry God, I can't speak today. And darling, for investors who recognise the future growth potential, that's from Forbes. Well, yeah, because I think about 1.5% of the cars on the road at the minute around the world are EV. That's obviously going to become 100% one day. Well, 99.9% .9 because you're going to have your, your old classic car drivers who are going to, you know, do all that stuff still. But I think the insurance will be sky high by then. Um, so there's a lot of room to grow with the EV market. Uh, just showing you a, a bit of growth there. Compounded annual growth rate. Uh, moving up there in Europe as well China China even more um, so yeah so they're looking at uh, around 470,000 annual units sold by the end of 2025 which is big um, it could be a great place to, to park some, some cash and then look again in five years to be fair um, yeah some more uh, interesting uh, things about sales uh, a bit of revenue 21 billion at end of uh, 2025 10 billion end of 2024 4 billion end of 2023 uh it's looking not looking great for 2022 but you know they'll have uh, about half a year to get them out so and obviously the production might only be in the us at that point for the for the for the start of uh, the project um talking about, more about margins uh, all that sort of stuff 12 month budget after equity financing this is about where I got to before when the video ended and I had to start again. Um, so yeah, we've got all the uh, all the info we need really. It's just a few things missing in my opinion. Um, like why have they not put Lucid on there? I mean Lucid's uh, I think about 30 horsepower better. So what else are they missing out? Uh, it's not like they don't know they exist because they do. Um, they've just put themselves up against current current um, EV companies basically EV models uh, yeah stuff about the valuation uh, pro forma value equity of around 3.4 billion um, that's obviously on the assumption of the closing of what uh, what it is uh, existing Faraday future stakeholders will roll the entirety of their existing equity holdings into the combined company which we already know it's the usual thing um Transaction implies a pro forma enterprise value of 2.6 uh, billion, is that? Yep. 
Um, so yeah, capital structure, governance. Yeah, so you can go through all this stuff. It'd take me too long to read it all out for you. Uh, but it all seems okay. I'd expect, um, you know, better earlier years, to be honest, but they might be being very conservative here. Um, I have got some common stock and I've got some, some warrants, but make sure you do your own research. I'm just browsing through this very quickly. Um, based on my own research, I think I'm probably going to swing this one or maybe three month short term sort of sort of uh, investment through the through the merger. But I think it's a go away and come back sort of thing. But then again, look at QuantumScape, look what they did. They've got no, no, no product till 2024 and that absolutely blew up. So it could be a mistake. It could not be, but we'll play it by ear for now. Um, see what comes out about them um, it's going to be like Fisker though we're not going to get any news for a while other than uh, deals that they might do um, there's some stuff uh, with regards to other vehicles um, again they've got Lordstown Fisker canoe they've got no um, they've got no lucid on there I don't like the way they're not comparing that because that's that's going to be the competition for them in my opinion uh, you're higher in Teslas and um, not so much Fisker, that's going to be lower end, but Lucid, definitely going to be their main competition in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, you've got your risk factors. We have limited operating history under our current business model. Um, we have increased losses. We have incurred, sorry, losses in the operation of our business, obviously because it's speculative. Uh, we expect our operating expenses to increase significantly in the future, which may impede our ability to achieve profitability. The rate at which we incur costs and losses in future periods from current levels may significantly increase as we conti continue to build our product offerings, build our manufacturing. So obviously they've got to speculate to accumulate, they've got to put money in. They're not going to be getting massive profits straight away, obviously. It's sort of dip your toes in and, and ramp up the, the manufacturing um, if we do not appropriately manage growth uh, blah 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 obviously that's going to be a problem our operating results forecast rely in large part upon assumptions and analysis yeah you don't say we may be unable to meet future capital requirements so you're going to get our friends there we have substantial existing indebtedness and may incur substantial additional indebtedness in the future yep that's always going to be a risk our debt agreement contains convert covenant sorry covenant restrictions that may limit our ability to operate our business um, our vehicles are in development and we do not expect our first vehicle to be produced until the first quarter of 2022 if at all um, so yeah it's, it's got some risk to it obviously they've no product if they had a product right now then you know or coming soon like lucid's coming in a three or four months that, that's not too bad so yeah, it's a case of uh, pros and cons. Do you just buy on the hype, sell it? Uh, that's probably what I'll end up doing, to be honest. There's more risk factors here. I'm not going to go through all of them, just giving you a general idea. More risk factors, more risk factors, more risk... Wow, there's a lot of risk factors. So, yeah, that concludes it, really, guys. Um, so, the price is now... I'll just give it a little refresh. Yeah, it's at 1510. Pretty still at the minute. Um, I think the hype of today has been absolutely destroyed by the ongoing... Uh, Wall Street bet stuff that's going on with, with, with GameStop and AMC and Nokia and all that sort of stuff uh, I can't wait to look at my phone to be honest but yeah, um, if you want to join our Discord group where we talk about these stocks first um, there's a Patreon link in the description if you want to become a Patreon, I think it's four, five, five dollars a month um, and you can join the Patreon uh, you can make you know you might make a lot more money with, with better advices from people in there that can give you some tips and tell you where to look uh, if you want to buy us a bottle of whiskey I've recently added an Amazon wish list uh, I don't know if you can see up there, I've got a few up there now, uh, some quite nice ones. Um, all appreciated, if you don't want to join the Discord and you want to treat me, then you can buy us a whiskey if you like. Uh, follow us on Twitter, follow us on StockTwits. Um, I always forget things on this bit. Well, yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, click the bell for notifications, leave a thumbs up. Um, and thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.